it's generally good practice to arrange for a face-to-face office visit around four to six weeks post-ICM implant to check on the insertion site and to address any issues or questions that a patient may have. To download data from an ICM at an office visit, a standard device programmer can be used in the same way that you might interrogate a permanent pacemaker. To interrogate an ICM using a programmer, place the programmer head over the device and follow the on-screen instructions once the device has been identified. The programmer can be used to download ECG recordings and also to change settings on the device to optimise its function. Some manufacturers also support device interrogation and programming via a tablet-based application. An example of this is Medtronic's Reveal Link Mobile Manager, which allows you to communicate with the ICM device without having to use a traditional programmer. The application allows you to select the initial parameters when you insert a Reveal Link device, or to check the device's parameters and also download ECG recordings on a follow-up visit. Whether you use a programmer or a tablet-based application, you can check the ECG quality and ensure that the ICM device is sensing R waves correctly. The device will not only display the patient's ECG, but it will also flag up those complexes where it has identified ventricular sensing, or VS, events. In this way, you can check that all of a patient's ventricular complexes have been identified correctly. You can download and review any ECG recordings that have been made, either as auto-detections by the device itself or as patient-activated recordings. In this example, you can see that the ICM device has saved an ECG recording showing an irregular rhythm with chaotic atrial activity. This is an episode of atrial fibrillation that the ICM device has correctly identified, automatically saving the ECG for subsequent review by the clinician. Don't forget to check the device's battery status to ensure that the ICM has sufficient battery longevity to last until the next scheduled review visit. At each device review, you can adjust the recording parameters according to requirements. You should aim to make the best use of the available device storage to maximise the chances of capturing the data that you need. You can set the type of arrhythmia events that a device will detect and the upper and lower limits for the heart rate that will be detected as tacky or bradyepisodes. episodes. You can also determine how long an episode has to last for before the device will recognise it as an arrhythmia. You can set how long patient activated recordings will last for and once you're happy you can save all of these settings to the ICM device. Remember that each manufacturer's ICM device will be slightly different so it's important to familiarise yourself with a relevant manual for the device that you will be using. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.